It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Mariam Longe. How are you? Fine, thank you. I have a bit of a cold. Uh, I've been carrying this for about a few days now. Mm. Wow. Really? Yes. <clears throat> so on Friday, I had the privilege and honor to celebrate with the Saraki family. Oh, yeah. And especially Auntie Tokwe Edu and her family. They had lost their, you know, the passing of their matron. So they did a celebration of life. I was there. I uh, met so many people who send their regards and their greetings. Uh -huh. So proud of the Your View platform and what we're doing. Um, but also, my big sis, Mrs. Margaret Alabi, is her um, birthday? best friend's birthday. Oh, wow. Her best friend, her darling husband, her gossip partner is his birthday today. Mm -hmm. And she's wishing him God's blessing. And she appreciates him. The children appreciate him. And they love him so very much. So this is from my big sis, your wife, Margaret Alabi. Happy birthday, sir. Nice. <coughs> nice. <coughs> Thank you. How are you doing? How are you doing, Elijah and Ima? Oh, I saw some new jewelry you are wearing. No. You always had it? No. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's quite new, actually. Uh -huh. Not new. She was right. Not like I, I got it today. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, we had a baby girl over the weekend. Yes, yes. we did. Yes. 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 We have another granddaughter. Congratulations, Santi. Like a, like ah, like so a power. Is beautiful on you. I was saying to her, I said, yeah. Waiki, look at this God. You had one child. Now you have three grandchildren. I'm telling you. Uh -huh. Ain't going to be like that. <laughs> if you ask Waiki, one grandchild is enough. But yeah. the girl is completely the and opposite is her. of her mom. She did not like being an only child. And so oh. she's making sure her kids do, do not experience that. Amazing. Uh, Congratulations. Congratulations. I pray that the mother and child do well. We are, we are, we are loving you from here. Yeah. I wish I could send them black soap. Waiki was like, don't you talk of black soap on my child. Uh-uh. I love her. She had to do that for months. All those things. Did you mention Agnes's baby? I can't. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, you didn't mention. My PA, Agnes. On TV, no, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, no. Agnes, my yes, PA. we have another. But I may be in for the weekend on Saturday. Unfortunately, oh, wow. I couldn't be there. But at least I was able to send my blessings. May God continue to be with them. I'm going to call her today and find out the names of the girl. Okay. The baby girl yeah, a week ago. So well, I won't be surprised one of the names is Mariah. And I'll be let's guess, let's, let's just yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see. She may have one of you. I love what you're wearing. Thank you. Is this BC? How's the BC? <laughs> no, no, it's not. I just ah. bought it <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Uh, since we're talking about babies, uh, my brother-in-law just, um, my sister-in-law just put to bed. Whoa. Ah. Yeah, she's, they're actually in my house for Mugo. Oh, okay. my Lord. Carrying babies all night. Oh. Oh. Know the baby sees it. Beautiful girl. Beautiful. Oh. She seemed it. You know, They're so all girls. Was, was it today? For, I mean, was so, it yesterday? Um, that was last week. Okay, yeah, okay. It's all girls on yeah, this table. Girls on Isn't that the fantastic? Table. Yeah, but I've been binging on, um, you know, these days when I'm resting, I just go on Netflix. There's this um, reality show, Ultimatum, yeah. where it's about uh, people yeah. who are getting ready to get married. Yeah. So yeah. they have to go into a house okay. and then they yeah. pair them with another. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was wondering because they were very deep conversations they were having. And I was asking myself, do we in this part of the world have this sort of conversations before we get well, into marriage? Mm -hmm. They, you know, it, it, it was an eye opener and sort of therapeutic mm -hmm. to have such strong conversations. Some of them come out stronger, others mm -hmm. dissolve the relationship before. Do you they like leave. that? Do you think it's a health um, whatever for those relationships. I, think I, so. have my, I have my I doubts so. about that. Because when those pleasure. couples come for therapy, <laughs> those are some of the questions that we ask them to ask themselves. So for me, it's therapeutic, but you know how things can be now. But I always I feel like we unearth things we shouldn't be unearthed because life is about learning, skipping things. So skipping we, we, things. And I'm not skipping, but things would eventually... Finding out things are so yeah. Yes, we each other. Life always happens. And no, no, no. There, there are certain before you character enter. traits oh, that yeah. you have and you know you're not compatible with this. Mm. But we patch along, and then at the no. end of the day, we're complaining about the same things you saw from mm. the beginning mm. that you could have either chosen to work on or left the relationship. That's because you think marriage has to last forever. If you're not ah. happy, just walk away. It, it should they're last. Adults. That's the prayer. That's, 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 that's the adult. <laughs> well, anyway. It's still Monday. It's blessed yes. when it lasts. How was your weekend? I'm telling you, it was your weekend. How was your weekend? It wasn't bad. I think I had quite a bit of activities. Yesterday, I mean, I hung out till like 
late into the midnight yesterday. We, what? I was on the island. This thing, let me know. They were asking, are you sure you're going to be on TV tomorrow? I said, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, yeah, look, you have when to When you say hangout, did you, do you mean like clubbing or? No, no, no Femi had his friends. So we okay. went, so we got, was in the house and okay. with guys. Because you're looking quite fresh faced for someone that hung out all night. Yeah, it wasn't like all night, all night. I got home like past midnight, but you know, it's all good. How was night all night? I don't know. You got to past midnight, say no be all night. Because if I tell you what happened to me at midnight, you would be surprised. I was woken up from my deep sleep. I thought arm robbers were attacking someone in my boys' quarters. It was, oh, it was my driver that was having a deep conversation about somebody's marriage. <laughs> and woke me with his loud voice. So why is it that Nigerians sure. love talking about loud. marriages <laughs> with all their power? I was like, sir, is something happening? <laughs> Say, I'm, I'm so sorry, ma'am. So sorry. It's just that this marriage thing has just happened. I think, and you woke me. <laughs> From my sleep. <laughs> Let me go on a break. I hope I've not forgotten anything important. I'm sure I had. No Saturday was important. I can't remember what it was. God okay. help me. Anytime you remember, Ooh, slide it in. Yeah. Slide yeah. it in. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we'll look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. <clears throat> Government targets $2 trillion in banks' forex gain tax. Clinton, Obama, Hillary, Pelosi. Others hail Biden for endorsing Harris. ECOWAS raises $38 million grants to boost SMEs. <laughs> Former Gen Sec Osigwe in NBA pres is NBA president-elect. And Zenit retains top spot as best bank for the record 15 years. Okay, which story? Okay, let me start with the NBA. So the elections for the Nigerian Bar Association happened over the weekend, and we have the former um, secretary to the NBA emerging as the president. So congratulations <coughs> to um, Sigwe. I'm trying to get his full name, sorry. Mazi Afam Osigwe he was the former general secretary. He's now the president-elect. We had um, several new vice presidents. So um, Sebastian Anya was elected the first vice president. We have... Uh, Mrs. Bola Tumi, Anima Shao, elected second vice president. <coughs> Mrs. Lane Abgarba, elected third vice president. Mm -hmm. We also have a new general secretary, um, Dr. Mobola Giojibara. And we have the national publicity secretary, Mrs. Bridget Edoku. Congratulations to all the officers, the newly appointed officers, and I hope that this will bring us all progress in the association. Okay, so um, Economic uh, Community of West African States, ECOWAS, is pulling 38 million U.S. dollars to lift small and medium enterprises, that's the SMEs, in member states. This was according to the chairman, who is our president, President Bola Metsunubu. He said this yesterday, and he also spoke of plans by the region body to extend grants to Mauritania, Central Africa Republic, Chad, and Cameroon through commercial and financial institutions. So he said that... Um, Additional 140 million uh, naira would be provided to support solar SMEs. And um, yeah, this was what he said during the sixth media coordination meeting of the African Union, AU, in Accra, Ghana, uh, where he also went ahead to showcase um, the ECOWAS um, achievements and landmarks during the year. So he said, <clears throat> and I quote, to achieve sustainable electricity access within the ECOWAS and Sahel countries, we will provide a total grant of 38 million dollars to SMEs in member states, an additional loan of 140 uh, million um, dollars will also be made available to the solar SMEs, not Naira. Now, within the period under the review, uh, they said ECOWAS supported experts from member states in international meetings and negotiations on environmental issues, including environmental governance. They said we provided support to our members in the implementation of the Paris Agreement and establishment of regional carbon markets. Uh, with respect to food security, the ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development has approved the instrument to operationalize the regional fund for agriculture and food. The regional food security was developed to uh, you know, achieve such um, sufficiency, especially in rice production. Now, he's also set for pastoralism in the Sahel. They've targeted the improvement of animal health uh, with a record vaccination of over 490 million livestock. And they've established common rules for controlling the veterinary medicine and their products, amongst other things that they plan to do for you know, states in, within the ECOWAS uh, region. Okay. Yeah, I have... The um, President of the United States uh, of America, President Joe Biden, who yesterday announced his withdrawal from the presidential race and also went ahead to nominate his Vice President Kamala Harris 
as <clears throat> you know he nominated her to take over from him that's to run in his stead and he said that um, he did this for the good of the Democratic Party and his country he said that um, he's decided to focus all his energy and his duties as president for the remainder of the term you know and um, he said a lot of wonderful things about his his VP and um, he endorsed her uh, some of the big stakeholders in the Democratic Party also endorsed her. Mm. Uh, many people uh, have been sending in, you know, their opinions. Most people think that what he's done is a charity. Well, they think it's an, a noble thing that he's mm -hmm. done, you down. know, to step aside <coughs> and uh, uh, allow his vice president to run in his stead. Of course, we know Donald Trump has called him all sorts of things, called him worst president <laughs> ever asked, and everything. everything. I, sent but, a, <laughs> I sent a post to our group saying mm. that the shot that was, was, was shot at um, yeah. Trump. Shot at uh, Donald fired. Trump, but fired at Trump, Trump but, but it, killed uh, by, the, by the, because of I, I thought too as well when I, when the story of the shot first happened, I was like, oof, this is going to affect Biden yeah. in a big way. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, I just thought it was, we may have had like, that plan anyway. No, I don't think now. so. I think mm. he was actually yeah. pressured to do, take that stance. Wow. But for me, I was like, can this ever happen in our country? We'll we get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Major headline. Um, so there's a proposed one-off tax on the 2023 foreign exchange gained by banks. So the federal government, um, according to a, um, an amendment to the um, Financial Act, was passed into law said that um, it stipulates that there shall be a lev there shall be levied and paid to the benefit of the federal government um, a tax of 50 percent of all foreign exchange transactions of banks within 2023 financial year now if this happens they they're expecting they're projecting to get about um, I think it's two trillion naira from the banks according to this report um, um, the, the the federal government with the whole is open to use this amount of money for the infrastructure of the renewed hope agenda so they're saying that some of the banks break in so much money for the revaluation so according to the report gt bank zenith uba and the and i think it was first bank one of the, the the first four banks they made about two-thirds of the total gains by these big three and they are, they are making into like 700 billion naira that was what they made from um some of them 700 billion and yeah, i think in total so they're saying that federal government should be getting half of all the banks um, revaluation of the foreign exchange levies, and hopefully that should get to be able to fund some of our infrastructure that the federal government is hoping to get um, with the Renewed Hope Agenda. Moving on now to the punch. We now have any major headlines here. We have stories inside. Mm. In fear of fuel, federal government demands Dangote refineries diesel report, orders new tests. And uh, from inside, we have a few human interest yeah. stories. Um, appeal court affirms death penalty on Dane for killing wife and daughter. Hmm. Armed men kill inspector, three civilians in Abia, and a few other stories. Okay, which story are we taking? So I have the Dangote story. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority is expecting a fresh report from the Dangote refinery to confirm the real sulfur content of their diesel. Um, the spokesperson, George N. Eita, in an interview, mentioned that the agency has done its job and they will not engage in a media fight with anybody over the claims by their Chief Executive Farouk Ahmed, when he said that the Dangote diesel has more sulfur content than the imported one. And so NAITA is saying that they have about 15 engineers and scientists that are presently in the Dangote refinery mm -hmm. and they are waiting their fresh reports today, Monday mm -hmm. today. Um, you know, the Chief Executive had mentioned that Dangote um, did not meet up, uh, does not have his full license yet, um, did not meet some of their requirements, mm -hmm. said that. Um, uh, oh, it's only at 45% uh, completion and, you know, so there was this back and forth online where media houses were now calling out um, the NMDPRA over the allegations of their chief executive. And so now they are looking to investigate Dangote's so for content in his diesel. But Dangote on his defense insists that they met the regulation and that the NMDPRA's allegation that he wants to monopolize that market is not so true. Okay. Mm. And they are insisting that um, they, are, they want to leave it for competition, so they are relying on importations as well. Okay, let's go on a very short break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. We are still reviewing Punch. What's the story? Yes, yeah, so I have another human interest story. Yeah. The Abia State Police Command has confirmed that a police inspector and three civilians were killed by armed men on Sunday. At the State Commission of Police, Kenechuku Onwe Mele, in a statement signed by the police, <coughs> a public relations officer, ASP Maureen Chioma Chinaka, said that um, uh, police operatives that were attached to the Rapid Response Squad are back. Abia State Command, uh, while on patrol along Ungwa Road by Mosque Junction, Abba, were attacked by armed men in an ash colored Siena vehicle. And, um, you know, they said the armed men opened uh, fire on the uh, police personnel, <coughs> and the operatives tried to repel the attack, preventing what could have been even a deadlier outcome. But uh, during the exchange of gunfire, two of the assailants were neutralized, while others escaped, they said, with various degrees of bullet injuries. Unfortunately, a police officer, Inspector Shehu Oyibo, and three civilians who were later identified as Chika Godlivet, uh, Onyena Turuchi Jonah, and uh, Item in Bende local government area of the state were found found, you know, they lost their lives. Uh, they said one was um, 32 years old, another was 18 years old from Akwaibom State. Those were ones who were once killed by bullets um, from the assailant. So <clears throat> according to the story, they said the bodies have been deposited, excuse me, <coughs> into the mortuary. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Are you done? Okay. Yes, I am. Okay, so I have NDLA. <coughs> they have announced the arrest of Ahmed Garba. He's a 48-year-old physically challenged man who was found in possession of six bags of cannabis weighing approximately 67 kilograms at his residence in Yari, um, in Kebi State. They said in Jigar State, um, Tukuri Yahaya, a 55-year-old Idris Haruna, 28, and Tanumu Umar, 29, they were nabbed with 90 blocks of cannabis weighing 116.8 kg uh, kazauri on the 19th. Then um, NDLA also said that um, some items, <clears throat> they confiscated an illegal shipment of cocaine and loud. And um, this particular syndicate, the way they try to conceal their own drugs is in incense candles, um, game packs, dry hibiscus leaves, that's Zubu, and traditional women's attire at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport. Um, of course, they were able to apprehend the suspects as they were associated with this as well. Then they also talked about this uh, businessman, Abdul Wahab Awolabi Ali Biosu. He was apprehended July 18th at his um, residence in Horizon Court in Lekki. They had intercepted a consignment of 40 parcels of loud containing over 20 kilograms. Um, they said that he had concealed the substances within packs of chessboards, Scrabble, checkers, and poker that had been imported from Canada on a British Airways flight. Airways flight. There's nothing that they would not use. Mm -hmm. They'll start using hair strands. Very soon. Because uh, what is it? Inside slippers. What? Find a way to just. <laughs> okay, let me tell you a story. So the appeal court in Lagos yesterday dismissed uh, the appeal of Denmark national Peter Nielsen. If you recall, this is a man that um, was actually convicted of um, killing his wife hmm. and daughter. Um, it was in 2022 by Justice Okikio Louis Gile. In her judgment, which was delivered back in um, 2022, she held that Nielsen smothered Zainab and Petra Nielsen to death. However, he had appealed that case, hoping that he can, um, she can, um, they can re um, relax the sentence of death, because he had actually sentenced him to death by hanging. The appellate court upheld the conviction of Nielsen by the trial court and dismissed the appeal for lack of merit, saying that... Um, um, according to the, the, the judge said that the Lagos state has proved the offense of murder beyond a reasonable doubt. It's resolved that the appeal in favor of the respondent had dismissed the appellant's case. case. He said that the missing exhibits are the results of the hashtag against us attack on the court do not affect the defense of the appellant as he had ample opportunity to, to uh, before the, uh, the attack on the courts. Um, so he was found guilty and convicted of murder again. Really, really sad indeed. Moving on quickly now to Daily Sun. Rebellion brews in Senate over Protinumbu stance. Local government autonomy. Dan um, Ganduje's aid hails Tinumbu's judiciary for display of courage. Paradox of oil wealth. Widespread populism in um, Nigeria. Ladoja under pressure to accept beaded crown. Ojikalu pushes for part time <coughs> legislature and um, regional government. Tackle insecurity to address food inflation. Traders urge FG, our diesel meets international standard, says Dangote. 2023 elections violence, hold governors, deputies, others to account, court orders INEC. And Obi Digo to Tinumbu, caution, 
Onanuga before he destroys Nigeria. Okay. Okay, so I have the uh, uh, Federal High Court and Serap. So Serap had gone to court to get a compelling order compelling INEC to prosecute governors and um, their deputies and all those involved in electoral violence in the just concluded 2023 elections. And the court, the Federal High Court in Abuja, um, gave this all the prayers that they brought before it. He gave, he's asking the state governors and their deputies and others to be prosecuted by INEC over cases of electoral violence, bribery, um, vote buying, conspiracy during the um, 2023 elections and all the people arrested also, uh, the court is also ordering that INEC prosecutes them immediately for electoral offenses, electoral violence, and other um, um, crimes committed during the elections. And this is, um, you know, this is a good one for me. Yeah. So the former governor of Abia State, Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, and um, a member of the ruling APC representing Abia North, has said that, um, or he's actually calling for a part-time legislature and the na at the national and state assemblies. And he said this will help to cut the cost of governance and also endear the people to the government. So uh, he said uh, this on his Facebook page over the weekend, and I quote: "He says I think it would be a very good idea if my colleagues and other members." of the House of Assembly will agree that we can sit for three months and do constitutional amendment first. So we can sit four times a year and if there's an emergency, there will be an emergency sitting. We can come to do a presidential bid on that basis and go back instead of sitting on a full-time basis. It says not only the Senate and the House of Representatives, but also the legislative houses in Nigeria will be on part-time basis. So he also maintained that the move is just to as part of the austerity measures that everybody has to take to reduce the cost of governance. Also talking about a regional government as another viable option. So he says if we're not uh, going for a regional government, or if we're going for a regional government, it means that the ministers and the legislatures will be one and the same. And he's been thinking about this idea on how they can, you know, sort of uh, save costs. I totally, so he says first, before I give my comments, mm -hmm. he says I will encourage the president, uh, Bala Metinubu, and the National Assembly to make these kinds of laws. This will help him and the system and it will also help everybody. And he says there are a lot of misconceptions that senators earn a lot of money, which is not true, but he would agree that they need to, you know, try and sit so, so that it's not um, something they are doing regularly. They just come in, do the job and then go and face their businesses. It's one of the things that I've also, you know, thought about that how do we how do we uh, make this as uh, something that you, you of course you understand the laws and everything you need to do when you come but then it's not um we're not putting you on the payroll as you are doing work because we understand that those that's not the kind of you don't make those decisions on a daily basis you can do your businesses grow in your different fields and then come from time to time make the laws and then also gives you an opportunity <laughs> to see how life is outside <laughs> so that when you come you're more the laws. I, I, I agree with him totally, and I hope that the president will likely consider it and see how this goes. Okay, so the story from that I have in the sun is that a rebellion is brewing in the Senate over the seeming pro executive stance on leadership. Um, some members of the upper chamber are dissatisfied with some of the developments happening um, in the Senate. According to this report, uh, there's widespread claim that the president has taken firm control of the Senate. So if you recall, they're having issues with the fact that um, dissenting views are being punished for their, um, their express, the expression of their views. Mm. So they reminded us that back in March, one of the ranking senators from the North, Abdul Ningi, was suspended for claiming that the current national budget was padded. If you recall, it was suspended for three months and then the, um, the suspension was lifted in June. Also, very recently, um, Senator Ndumetu was suspended as chief whip, chief whip of the Senate because obviously he was um, criticizing the, um, the president. So the, the speculations that him being demoted um, for criticizing the president is causing a bit of internal um, re revolution or um, uh, rancor within mm -hmm. the Senate. And they're asking that this must be um, taken very seriously. The development, according to Dele Sound, has reliably gathered that it's causing a silent resistance and revolution in the various caucuses of the Senate, where members said they can no longer grant press interviews because they don't want to be sanctioned wow. by the, um, the Senate president. Um, so this is just something that was important for us to ensure that there's yeah. no rebellion within the Senate. I have uh, oh, the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tawiri Lagwaja, has called for collaboration in addressing contentious issues of how armies can better protect the nation. 
Um, they said he presented the paper at the Symposium on Peace, Security and the Commitment of the Youth. This was organized by the French Army um, in France. Um, he spoke on the topic armies and the protection of their national territory, legal framework, issues and challenges. Um, this event was attended by 12 other chiefs of um, national armies across Africa. So his concerns were the applicability of local and international laws uh, and conventions in the face of harrowing struggles against non-state actors. He said that these actors choose to either ignore or treat the laws with levity. Um, was well, just really a conversation about you know how better to protect the army, protect their territories, mm -hmm. and uh, the French army was talking about transi transiting from solely military to, a all, to an all-encompassing, mutually beneficial approach to relationship come engagement, which is you know what we always say: it's not just in the weapons; it's also in the relationships yeah. and the intelligence. So, all right, that's, that's all we can about. take on front page review today. We we'll come back, to continue with our show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So today we're discussing the new minimum wage. So last week, President Bola Tinumbu approved 70,000 Naira minimum wage for Nigerian workers with the promise to review the national minimum wage every three years. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Because many of you have uh, followed the journey uh, from NLC and TUC's proposition for 250,000 Naira minimum wage. Um, the federal government had come up with 62,000. This was what was provided and they had given to the president to discuss with the tripartite meeting where they also had conversations with all the governors across the country. And then our president has finally um, agreed to 70,000 and labor has also agreed. So the president has promised that by Tuesday, the, the law, the, the um, National Assembly will get the, the reviewed law and we'll take it from there. But what are your own thoughts? Let's hear, do you agree to 70,000? Do you think this is appropriate? Do you think it's a win for the people? Or do you believe that government should have at least come a bit closer to the 250,000? Um, some were saying that maybe 100,000 would be better, 150,000, considering the, um, hardship. The, the hardship that we're going through right now. What are your thoughts? You can call us on the numbers on your screen, 081-0764-1679, 1630 <coughs> You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read the tweet. So, what are, ladies, what are your thoughts? Um, this is about a 130% or so increase uh, from 30,000 naira to 70,000. It's, it's quite, I mean, <clears throat> what do you think? Do you think this was right or do you think the government should have done a bit better than what was proposed? You see what I'm saying? I think, uh, okay. 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 Nima, go ahead. Based on what um, government is um, dealing with right now, according to what government says they're dealing with, this is reasonable. Government all this, all this while have been screaming that they cannot afford it, particularly the subnationals. They've been screaming that they can't afford to pay these monies. And we are all wondering how the 250 initially demanded by labor would make it. You know, but we're grateful that uh, the president took this up on himself mm. because the back and forth uh, with the tripartite committee was weighing down on people. We're all wondering what would happen if truly they shut down the entire economy, but we are happy that, you know, they were able to meet at a midpoint. Um, some people have criticized that uh, labor, you know, took the fight too far. Because where they started from, from 500 and something, and they knew they were coming here, you know, mm. making people have big goals. But the reality of what is on ground is not unknown to labor themselves. So we know part of this tripartite committee is the organized private sector who are employers of labor themselves and mm. they run businesses. And all that we are all dealing with is touching everybody. everybody. Mm. So before, beyond the federal government, because when the, the minimum wage is passed, it becomes law. It's compelled on businesses also to find a way to pay it. You know how business side are downsizing and compelling some people to uh, uh, adopt new departments, you know, instead of delegating and spacing out work. You compel one person to carry it also you can pay that person and downsize and it's going to eventually affect other people mm. so we have um on that committee the organized private sector we also have labor and then we have the federal government mm. the federal government on their own part can continue to take 
what bank loan or IMF loan to pay salaries. Maybe that will satisfy people. But if it is based on earnings, the federal government must, you know, look within. We've removed subsidy, or we've had increased increase revenue, and so the federal government might be able to pay. Okay. But the subnationals who are also getting money are saying, we, we cannot pay, pay this amount. It's from that money we want to do, road, and we're wondering mm. where would the account and the, you know, the uh, conversation come from. But we must realistically accept this as the present reality, and I hope that we as private business people be able to pay so that our own workers yeah, as well. Our own workers as well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, in the light of everything that's happening, um, they've been shifting ground. So, uh, uh, labor has shifted, government has shifted, and government kept insisting that we need to be able to do something that is sustainable. If you also look back, we'll find out even the thirty thousand naira minimum wage, many states were not even paying mm -hmm. that one. Uh, so we're still paying as far back as 18,000 era. Now, with 70,000, we may still have issues of a lot of states not jumping into it immediately and paying that one. So we also need to put that you know, in perspective to say that, OK, if they have done this, and the fact that you mentioned now that just reminded me that it, is, it will now become law, mm -hmm. meaning that even private enterprises will still be mandated to pay that as minimum wage. How many people can actually afford to pay that amount of money. So if we look at it in that light, we can say, OK, I think it's OK that Labour has accepted. Let's see how this goes further. But we, if we also look at it in other uh, ways where we see that there's still a lot of spending that the government is doing for themselves. There's still a lot of um, you know, uh, trips that are going that we feel they can cut down on. And I like what um, Oju Zokalu also said in the papers this morning, that we can you know, make sure that the legislature just sits a few times a year. They don't have to be there as um, uh, permanent workers. They come in, you know, come in, do your bid, and go so that they are not paid salaries like they're sitting every day. It's also a way of cutting costs. Now, when we do all of this in different places, the government is cutting the cost, and you're telling the people that we want to stop uh, getting loans to pay salary. We want to pay with what we're generating. And we're saying, okay, this is 70,000 we can offer now. People would accept it more with you know, willingness and understanding that everybody, if they touch everybody right now, and with time, when the boom comes, we can now begin to have negotiations yeah. to extend it. Yeah. <coughs> organized labor and federal government that we finally got into this point without the crippling strikes that you know were threatened um 70k yes good minimum wage as we have all agreed uh, more than 100 percent increase but we know that it's still just minimum wage mm. it's not a livable wage yeah yeah um and it shows that you know at first i i knew from the beginning i knew that um Labour was just using this as a negotiation tactics, those very huge amounts. Because as Nima says, they are very well aware of you know, the issues that we have in our country. So and what are these issues? Yes, um, the government would say that they are broke and things like that. Even the 13,000 um, minimum wage, many states have been unable to meet those. But then there are many other reasons why you know government is broke there's lots of wastage happening mm. so we need to find ways you know to block those wastages um the as we know the legislators last week had um, decided for six months they're going to half give us half their salaries so that it can be put together and to buy food for nigerians so they, in their own way they're showing us the steps that they are taking yeah. to tighten their belt uh, we need to see more of this tightening of belt that shows us tangible concrete you know, contributions towards helping the regular Nigeria. Um, 70,000, um, we'll start with that. But there is room for more. The three-year um, review is welcome. I like that. Um, the initial five-year review was good, but for times as this, things mm. are so tough. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of anxiety amongst people price of food is so high. People hmm. are telling you of things that they haven't bought in a long time. People think that they cannot afford. And I'm not even talking, I'm talking of people who would say are middle class. They're yeah. talking about how tough things are. So yes, we see government has, uh, and uh, organized labor, they've come to this point, but there's still a lot more to be do. done. And I know that it's not just by increasing <coughs> wage, it has to be in us as well. We need to cut down this product um, on importation. 
which will sort of bring me to this Dangote refinery thing that is happening. And what, what is happening? I thought this was good news. Where are we today? I thought we're about to have a refinery where we're getting our crude oil, refining our crude oil, selling, um, um, earning revenue. And now here we are. Anyways, you know, I deviate a bit, but yeah, welcome. Yeah. Uh, welcome. You're talking position. about um, yeah. things we can't buy anymore. I mean, I, was, yeah. I remember I was selling my, I, I'm not, I love plantains. You guys mm -hmm. know how much I love plantains. Mm -hmm. I'm not blood plant, I'm not bought plantains anymore because I'm like, how can you hmm. pay 6,000, 4,000 to get a bus? 8,000. You know, that's your area. Now, my only that is still 4,000, 6,000. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Four I'm pieces. like, I am not going to pay that. So yeah. I've not bought it anywhere, but over the weekend, I think it was, in, no, I think it was on Thursday or so, I just kind of just wiggled my way. Just let me just buy this bunch. Yeah. Because of how I have screamed about this plant in my house, my health didn't touch too. How they to touch it? They have, they're just leaving it because they're like, ah, mommy has Before mommy you plant. touch it, <laughs> at... now it's yeah. almost spoiled. I have to tell oh. her this morning, auntie. Cook this thing now. Oh. And I'm thinking, because she's afraid of cooking it because <laughs> I'll be complaining that yeah. people yeah. are finishing plantain. Yes, you cannot be eating plantain anyhow. It's, it's a case of So she has not left it in the fridge <laughs> for me. Yeah. And like, so is it that it's going to be black? See this life, no balance. Yeah. So yeah. He, he, my people call it any joker. Ali Balirela, you are the one that is complaining that plantain is because they keep it. They are still complaining that it's that they will not chop it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that so, so we're, the reality now is that we are all just kind of managing. So yeah. you're absolutely right. But I always just feel that, and, I, and someone was telling me over the weekend that, is the perception of um, um, cutting down costs that mm. we like, you know, we're going to see it done. Yeah, because yeah. I, I truly believe that even if they cut all their salaries in half, mm. it's not going to give us the money we're looking for for infrastructure. It's not going to fix our educational system. It's not yeah. going to fix our health system. Yeah. But people just need to see that, okay, we are not, we are we're all, all in managing. this together. Yeah. Yeah. So once they have that perception, okay, government has cut their salaries, mm. maybe they can begin to understand a 70,000 naira minimum yes, wage. Yes, okay. It's funny how the average Nigerian is asking government to cut salaries, but the party where they happen for this Nigeria now. And God bless you. Ah! These people don't. The champagne they're importing. These, these people are not cutting. But they like to look at government. Is it's government they're focusing. Yeah. Four yeah. fingers. Ah. Ah. Let, me, let, let me even finish that. You know, I love yeah. where you're taking us because I go to parties. Yeah. I know parties in the now. So maybe high level, I know, you know yeah. but the few that I go, I think to myself, ah, ah. For there's Mariah, no money. You went for country. one party where you yourself said there used to be. Or you went for something where they used to have parties, they do, do not have party anymore. Some parties you used to go to, they used to have maybe 100 bottles of champagne. Now they are doing 50. Mm -hmm. They so are cutting champagne. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that, At you know, level. everybody in At their, their level. category. Yeah. You see these legislators that they have said they've given us half their salary. Many Nigerians are still looking at it and saying, well, what is it that exactly. you have given us? Mm -hmm. You know, but in their own so, pocket. So we are, you're right about we need to cut, you know, the cost, but it's not going to be enough. Anytime I drink champagne in a party, I'm thinking, this is for it. Why are you drinking it? Why are you drinking it? Why are you drinking it? Don't go to the party. No, I will go. When you are Nigerian that is cutting costs for other people in their pockets, don't go. I want you to have a conversation and tell them, what? You put a bottle of champagne. No, no, that's wrong. I'm thinking to myself, there is already in the largest and wastage, and it doesn't just stop, start and stop by the House of Reps telling us 50% of their exactly. salary. That's what we want to it hear. It starts and stops at, you know, all the ladies. Yeah. It's not about salary. You. When yeah. you look in the news, all of us are I'll give you five managing. minutes to say this one. Let, 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 wait, Mustafa, let me take Mustafa's call. Good morning, Mustafa. Thanks for calling your life. Hello, Mustafa from Abuja. Hello. Go ahead, please. Welcome from Kaduna. You're live. Please go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. What am I? Good morning. Okay, ma. Ma, the issue of this minimum wage is a little bit... It's on volume. ...compromise. Because if you look at it, the inflation rate is very high. You know? So, it's something that we have not seen to them up, but we can manage it. The president is really tried. You know, if you look at the high inflation rate, Nigeria has experienced high inflation rate in this years which erodes the purchasing power So if you look at the purchasing power, Sorry, I didn't hear Mustafa, so I'm so sorry about that. Can yeah. we come back to you? We're talking about we also yes. need to also see how we can cut down on our wastage, yes. So there's a saying of the prophet I would like to quote that, you know, you don't flaunt wastage, your food, in front of a hungry person. I always mm -hmm. say it all the time. It is in this Nigeria that we will talk about the current hardship of farmers are suffering, insecurity, and then we'll see somebody just say, well, I, I made my money now from government. Do his own party. You see government people too. Do their own. Oh, I've already given you half. It's the wastage. Is that, you know, 
Because in some homes, some people are wondering, how do I even feed my baby? Mm. Some people are thinking, in this same Nigeria, how do I manage? Yes, we have it. We all have access. We, you know, I constantly caution my kids that look out the out, outside. We're in the traffic and my kids are like, you've not bought this and that. And I said, that's boy cleaning glasses, somebody's child like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you not eaten today? You know, we don't, we, we think uh, it's not my business. That mentality is what is causing all this rancor. The need to want to protest. If it is hard everywhere in the world, it is hard everywhere in the world. It means that it's raining on everybody's roof. And it should show, you know, that I have a gen in a community where they should be light. Oh, I know somebody there. Is, uh, they should exempt me. Whereas you can do something collective. We should learn this collective thing. It's, it, it comes down to the Dangote issue we're also having. Even if, even if truly, truly, oh, Dangote is looking to monopolize, how can you regulate it to make sure that we don't, we no longer do that importation that is causing the hardship. Shouldn't we be selfless in how we manage all these things so that people's life at least will ease out? We cannot continue to do one policy today that brings hardship to the people tomorrow and we say, why are they asking questions? Is it my money? Is it my salary? What am I saved for it? Nobody wants to know. You need to make it as transparent as possible because everybody is... Let me take this call. They are going through their yeah. own. Okay. Let me take this call. Kletos from Akopa, <clears throat> you're live. Good morning. Good morning, Claytus. You're live. Can't hear him. Good uh, morning. Okay, good morning. Uh, please, I want to put the vote concerning the minimum wage. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, can you, can you hear me? Very clearly now. Go ahead. Okay. Please, uh, I want to commend the government for the minimum wage. I know that because... Uh, Okay, so I want to commend the president for the minimum wage concerning the situation of the country for now. Uh, when we talk about the whole thing, it did well because of the. You're listening to the TV. Please listen to uh, talk to me directly. Me. I have to cut the line off. Let me yes, go so, to, yeah, let me just hear business thoughts and then okay, I'll go ahead. Yes. So I want to differ on the party issue. Mm. You cannot tell people not to celebrate because uh, there's yeah. hunger in the land. People would always celebrate whatever they want to celebrate. And in that celebration, a lot of people are empowered. The caterer is paid. The decorator is paid. The MC is paid. If you take out all these celebrations, those professions, how would they make money? Everybody's helping everybody one way or the other. I believe that money is meant to circulate. So if you have so much and if you say, OK, let's not do parties again, people will hoard their money and it will not circulate. So that is not the crux of the matter. The crux of the <laughs> matter is that the government who is responsible for the majority... No, listen now. I'll never finish. Who is responsible for the majority of the people must do what is right, must put things in place. And it's not just about increasing, whether they increase it from 70 to 150 tomorrow and all of that. No, it's about making sure that the basic amenities are there so that even if it's 50,000 naira you're earning, you have good access to quality education for your children, access to good health care for your children. The little one you have, you can manage it. Nobody's okay. asking for too much. All right, let me... But for us to say that people should not celebrate whatever they want to celebrate, let me please, go a break. Boy, we'll please, this party party allow us to have a I'm not a party person. It's only the party that money can circulate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this matter, minimum wage, and we're now kind of offshoot to other things which are related because the truth is that we are addressing our excessiveness, our, um, the yeah. way we, uh, we also need to our cut lifestyle. down. So federal government has given us a minimum wage. We're also saying that we also, as a people, must look within. And in, in discussing that, we're looking at different angles. I was, saying, I was going to talk to um, what you said earlier. I agree with you. I mean, you, you can't stop people from partying. Nobody's saying stop. What we understand is like have this socialist view. 
where it's now about us. It's just like you, we had, you use Rwanda here as a, for an example. As a nation, it came together. First of all, we have to forgive each other for what we did. Yeah. And what's the new, next way forward? As a people, we don't have these are the resources we have. What can we do to be able to um, use our resources and see how we can expand our economy? So as a, as, a, as a people, we have to be united in where we are heading. So government is saying, I'm doing this. We're going to cut down costs. What are we as individuals going to do in our own capacity too? We have to also look at it as we are part, we are stakeholders in this nation called Nigeria. So we're not saying stop your parties. We're saying understand that if you're importing 100 bottles of champagne, mm. right now, because of the way things are, people would understand if you only sell them soft drinks. Like, you know, this we're not doing, we're not, I'm, not, I'm not doing parties anymore. I'm, not, I'm just doing soft drinks. Understand it. The other day we wanted to do it, I wanted to do a birthday party. I really felt like having a birthday party this year. I really wanted to. But after looking at the numbers, I said, okay, you have to think of birthday party, you have to think of um, summer, you have to think of, there's so many mm. factors that, yeah. you know, which one is priority? Party definitely is not priority. Mm -hmm. So we have to, as a people, now begin to rethink. Somebody was having a barrier. Somebody, a big family, that's me, I was expecting to go and tie my gilly, do the whole party. This family did barrier. This is like a 90 plus barrier. I was ready for party. They just sent a message that over. after the church, carry your pastor home. and go home. And I'm yeah, thinking, hey, <laughs> pastor <laughs> and go home, bow. Ah, because I was ready for money. But they, they, of course, they have this uh, on the whole thing. And that's, Sonia, the did. woman said, no, thank you. <laughs> After church service, everybody gets a bag, you go home. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, people she even are tried mind, with the bag, mind, mind shifting. Yeah. People are realizing, mm -hmm. like, let us not do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. We must mind talk to ourselves. So, so I know that a lot of times when we talk about this lifestyle, this lavish lifestyle yeah. that we have as Africans, we also like to compare it with Europeans and how they have like a much more conservative, materialistic view. view of life. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, now looking at it, I think they may have gotten there by circumstances like what we're mm -hmm. going through right now. The wedding dress is hard, but you're also looking at how you want to call everybody from your village, village. and everywhere to come, <laughs> the, yes. you know, to, to, to come to this wedding that you're throwing or whatever party it is that you're throwing. I think what will happen is if advice, if conversations like this does not take us there, reality mm. will eventually take us there. Yeah. We'll watch how it is that we're spending. Um, there's a, um, in, in, in life, I know that we have our culture, but you're so right about this change of mindset. See, there's, there are people that I have always um, admired because they seem to be more conservative, but I have seen that we have also called them out because we either call them stingy, call them, they're not up yeah. and coming. And then there's a whole industry that makes his money from massaging your e our oh, ego. God bless you. You know, from helping us to feel better than. My generator, is, my generator is bigger than yours. There's that industry that is built around that. And so that industry will fight tooth and nail to get us to keep spending our yeah. money there. That is in the lavishness of all our different whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, look at somebody. This is a reality. Someone sat down and made a whole post on um, nursery graduation. And she says, please, parents, let's <laughs> think back. When we were graduating from school, was it not our uniforms mm -hmm. that we wore? Yeah. Now we're looking for money all to gone. buy prom dresses and all these things. Suits. Where? Who do you think is with? Is that person that understands your ego? You want to show yourself. Yeah. Don't worry. I, I have you. I'm waiting for you. you. I will tell you. But in reality, in the times that we have now, it does not stop your, what you have earned. Mm. You know, your child will still graduate. So there are so many things that we have that. to start rethinking. What are we really yeah. doing? Why are we doing it? God bless you. I mean, I love that because <laughs> everybody, if you want to spend money, they'll make you feel like yeah. you, are, you are better than them. Yes. Like in this school, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. this is how we, this how we do it in the abroad. Yo, so you are in that school. Party. Did you see? On the table alone. Yes. You know, so you cannot, you are more now. You yeah, cannot more, do that standard. Let me take this call. Um, <laughs> let me see. I just lost the call. Good morning. Thanks for calling. You're live. Oh, my God. Hello. Good morning. I can't. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I got the, um, the, there's a lady that, there was a time I was focusing on my skin. Popping. So there was one lady that just kind of grabbed me like this. She'd been on my case for years. Finally, I said, okay, auntie, let me come to your store. So then I did, I did facials, I did the whole thing. I was helping me some cream and everything. I, said, I know that first time, okay, I've made the money. Since that first purchase, she has been you ran away. me. Of course I ran away. <laughs> when I see the numbers, chasing me to, to buy, buy, my, buy oh, cream had finished. Mm. And me, I was using my regular, I can't come and clean myself. Mm. She kept calling me and wondering, ah, you need this, it has finished. I'm sure it has finished. I thought, yes, it has finished, but I'm not buying new one. She kept saying, no, you can pay it over time. I said, it's not about that. Mm. I'm thinking, skin, 
tomato, Food. pepper, yeah, right. uh, plantain. Gary. I'm thinking skin. Mm. Yeah, they're like, I gotta wear the options, girl. I mean, I, I appreciate yeah. what you did for me and I appreciate how my skin, but yeah. I gotta wear my options. I'm not gonna be, so I'm not gonna that feed feeds that. that. If somebody else at that level can do that, me as, as I am, I can't, I'm sorry. So I like where you went to, yeah. and I like the fact that um, the conversation should be more about people uh, understanding where they are exactly. and yeah. staying there. We cannot expect everybody to stay in the same spot True. because everybody is not in the exactly. same spot. Exactly. There are people who have worked hard, who have grown, who have earned their success. Yes. And you cannot tell them not to spend their money the way they want to spend their money. When you do that, you are restricting your own money from coming. Because by the time you get to that success, your money will not come because you're already judging somebody who has gotten... Yeah. Hold on. Who has gotten money, you know, gotten to that level of success? Who has earned it? Yeah. The, 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 the problem is a lot of people, because they are looking at what people will say, and because they are looking for validation outside, mm. get out of their way. When you know, say, you never reach, yes. you are now borrowing to overdo it. Mm -hmm. But if you have it, you have it in excess. And... I've also understood that most of these people that we think they have it in excess and we think they are just lavishing on themselves, they do a lot of charity without shouting about it. Yeah. They pay a lot of school fees, we don't know about it. Yeah. They put money in different charity homes. They sponsor a lot of people, their villagers, their brothers. They are Let me give an example of something They are doing a lot, of, a lot of things that we don't know about. But what we see is when they now choose to celebrate themselves and spend their money. Yeah. So let's not judge and feel... All of us will have to be on the same. I mean, even Jesus said, the poor will always be amongst us. The prayer is that you are not among the poor because there's no way we can have a society there, 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 without there was somebody, the poor. There was, there was they are also I necessary. Know, that um, got an apartment in, um, in Banana Island, you know, and he, because we're really happy for the person. I just pray he's not watching TV right now, you know. But then the person was now, so after the band day, everything, mm. everything, the guy is now complaining, ah, he, he has to leave this place, so he, he can't will, afford this. He cannot complain. You know, because in his own mind, he wanted to be, mm. you know. When he never then, reached. Really, when he never reached. Never reached. Because your mind, you just felt that I want to be in that committee. There's nothing yeah. wrong in aspiring. Mm. You, know, you can aspire Aspire's to be. But the problem is he's not able to sustain it because he just felt that he needed. So now he's complaining. Mm. He's having problems because he wants to leave. Yeah. I just want to add something. There's something they always advise. Before you buy an item, yeah. make sure you, you can, can afford it, it 10 times over. Mm. That shows you are in that level. If you cannot afford that thing you want to do, ten, like times. I want to plan party for, let's say, 20 million. And I cannot well, afford 20, yeah. no, hold on. And I cannot afford 20 million 10 times over. You are a fool to uh, plan a part of 20 million. The, is it I'm the just giving you an instance. This hairstyle, so we have hair. This yes, hair. and you can cannot afford this, that. I can't afford hair 10 times this so hair. So why are you buying it? You are not there. Ah. Okay. Um, but you know a lot of our wealth in this country is, is fake wealth. Mm. I feel that when you, see, when, when you travel abroad, where Oibo people stay, the kind of shops that are lining their streets, if you bring those shops in Augustina. this country, we cannot sustain, we cannot sustain yes. those um, luxury, yes. that luxury, Real luxury sector. We can't. Mm, yeah. A lot of us are just trying, we put all yes. our money together, buy it here, and then it's it's never never we don't you. have it at an everyday Suleiman. life. Let me take Dr. 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 Suleiman, you're live. Okay, uh, good morning all. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I really appreciate your uh, discussion today, and it has been a fruitful one, but I really want to make a contribution here. Uh, I'm looking at this from three, uh, from this, uh, three different angles. As a citizen of the country, what do you have to do to really come out of this problem? The second one is what the government has to do on its own part, and what is the really current reality? Now, if you now look at it now, it's not the issue of increasing the minimum wage. It's the issue of restoring back our economy. In as long as we continue to increase salary, and we are not going back to the grassroots of what is the root cause of this. If you now look at it, look at UK. You can have a salary of just 2,000 pounds, and that will take care of 2,000, 2,500, and you can go to do every shopping and still have an excess to pay for your bills, your accommodation, and still have some systems even send back if you are if, if not from that country, let's say you are in Nigeria. Now we have a salary of say somebody and it's over 200000 but when you go to the market, you cannot do a shopping that will take him up to two weeks. That is telling you that even if you give him 500000 naira, 
that will not take care of the need. Mm. Now, what do we really have to do? We have a system that nobody wants to make a fake sacrifice. The people in position in power never want to do the right thing. The right thing is that we have to go back to ensure that we are producing what we need. At least 50% of what we need in this country is the only way out. If we cannot do that, let me tell you one thing. Next year also, we have to demand for an increase in weight. That is one thing. Thank you very There's much. To, if you look at our society now, how sure are we that in each local government we have a charity organization? I'm sure most mm -hmm. of these politicians, they only go back to their communities where it is time for election. Now, Thank you, Dr. Suleiman. I didn't hear most of what he mm. said, but it was a bit, but I know that our viewers probably heard, hear clearly. Uh, it was really difficult. Just as we were talking on the purchasing power of an average Nigerian as compared to, you know, the purchasing power compared with earning power um, abroad. countries abroad, and how mm. we here think that, you know, we must also live like that. Then mm. yeah. So how our politicians are doing. So the real topic here is whether this 70,000 Naira is within you know, what the government can Nigerians purchasing mm. power. But the truth is, it's not rich. Never, not rich. Not, yeah. It is not. But we've come to a middle ground. And mm. now we're talking about still, you know, living within certain oh, limits so that your next person is not provoked <coughs> by what they're going through and thinking, oh, because you're privileged. Remember when the NSAS thing started? Everybody that was a bit connected or privileged or attacked. even were, were attacked. Mm. And we're getting there. That's why we must run at least mm. a socialist mentality in our... No matter what you are, who you are, what you're worth. We had royal fathers attacked. Mm. We had people at Anybody that's drivers. You, 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 you have driver. I remember that day, the day before the burning of the station, when I was driving home. I paid my way to Osho, to Ilasa, and I ran out of cash. So, you know, the boys will see your, your, yeah. your car. Oh, ha, you, you get paid. AC. You own this, you wind up. Yes, them. they told us to yeah. turn off our so, ages and wind up. And, and for having a bit of comfort, you were made to pay. Yeah. So everybody was taking out their grievances, their hardship on us, on other people, for you can, you can afford certain things. And that reality is why we must, not because you cannot, or uh, your body's compared, you must mm. learn to bring it within check. Which is you what Maya was saying. Yourself. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that. Yeah, you should not throw parties. The people that have money are not the ones throwing everyday parties. That exactly. one is not throwing any parties. Thank you. Yeah, He's no, investing his money. It is but the people that want to show every day. Ah, my you senior know, wife doing young. It's my turn. <laughs> my ah, busy down doing young. Wait, well, don't mind me. I'm not like her. I'm, and then I'm they do my party own. again. Say. Because yes, <laughs> the people who have yeah. money are looking for other ways to reinvest. See, so you to... open a business and you employ other people, and yeah. those people are off the market, and yeah. they, you know they reduce the. The people who don't have constantly check their backyards, the gale at some point. The table is full yeah. at their parties. Let me take Tim. Tim is <laughs> holding. Good morning, Tim from Bedouin. Uh, good, good morning. Good morning. Yes. Sorry, I, I need some volume. I am very I can't happy to, to be able to reach you out today. I think I am anyway. Let me introduce myself. I'm a, I'm a typical farmer and an agri economist. Okay. okay. Yes. Fantastic. Good to have so you now, on the show. I, Thank you very much, ma'am. I want to go straight to the issue. The core issue here is the issue of minimum wage. That is the first issue. Then the second thing is the issue of the, the National Assembly donating half of their salaries. Now, they, 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 we are very specific on donating half of their salaries. They talked about the, the money will be meant in the next six months to buy food for Nigerians. Now, that is where I have an issue. The core problem we have today, even if the minimum wage is increased to what level we are asking of 250, our problem will not be solved. The core problem we have today is the problem of food insecurity. That is where the farmers will come in and where we are angry. Just three weeks ago, my cousin who went to prospect for a new place where we are going to farm rice to shift away from the swamp we have been farming was killed inside the forest by Fulani headsmen. No provocation, no nothing. Just we entered it. All we had was gunshots. And when we went, it was an issue. Now, if this issue of uh, insecurity is not addressed for our farmers to go back to the farm, yeah. whatever anybody contributes, and no matter the minimum wage, so we will really achieve good. nothing. Yeah. So all we are asking of the National Assembly, for we, uh, typical farmers, what we are asking is they should address the issue of insecurity 
Now, even if they donate the money, where are they going to buy the food from? Are they going to import the food? Until we go back to our farm. Production today, as far as agriculture is concerned, is zero. Let us be very factual about it. A chipper of yam, we were selling for 200 naira, today we're selling for 2,000 naira. At a farm, I'm talking. So please, if our National Assembly and the federal government is in, if they rise up with all sincerity and address the issue of insecurity and farmers go back to farm, production comes. Okay. I Thank you very much, Tim. Whether we have any Point amount of minimum wage, whether low. Thank you very much. That, that, that's a very valid point. Insecurity, food insecurity is a major problem. And so no matter how much money you give for you minimum food, wage, that's going, to, it's not going to be effective. Okay, let's take a few comments on social media as we uh, begin to dis uh, wrap up on this. Mm -hmm. But, the, but um, there, was, there was a point I was going to happen earlier. And so Mariam said is that it is from times like these mm. that we begin to change our culture. We now see that our children, when they grow up, they might not be throwing lavish parties as like we are, because yeah. gradually the system will check you, will begin to recondition your mind, to see things differently, understand that you have to be more prudent. Other countries, other even African countries, are not as um, excessive as we are when it comes to things like this. You know, mm -hmm. it's times that really, really caused them. So we, and one of the things I like to take from this conversation is that Nigerians also must see where they are in this puzzle. The, the role they play in this puzzle, that we need to also be part of the solution. I mean, indeed, I mean, the other day I went to, there was somebody invited me to a new hotel that was opened. This hotel was luxurious to the highest. And the person was proudfully taking us around, and now all I could see, this is, this for me is like, we can't have, our economy can't yeah. accommodate this. Our, our economy cannot accommodate this. People, who's going to come and pay this amount of money to come? This, for this is, like, for what, I mean, it's, it's, that, that's the way we are. But they are paying now. Yeah, but you, so it, they I, they but where are they getting it from? It's always so it's, it's when you now trace that money, work? like who, who, is, who is selling um, shoes? Like, what, what are you producing your... to get this kind of money, to even build this kind of thing? Exactly. Is, is, that, is that how you stole the money? So this, where is this money coming from? We have to be able to trace this money because if we don't ask the right questions, we just say, oh, he has a beautiful hotel. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. But the truth is that where did that money come from? It's part of this money that we're looking at. Where, where is our, where is our you money? You mentioned this because I've heard a lot of people talk about like all this luxury in the hotels or... Interior um, decorators. Yes, or um, clothing lines. Yeah. They say that most of their clients are Yahoo boys. Of course. Oh. That is what, that is what we are catering to. Those are the wow. people that have that sort of money on a regular to that buy. can go to those yeah. shops or go to those places and spend money. So what, who are we deceiving? Exactly. This not money that, now. This money that's stolen is not money that comes back to us. This is not money that was earned from us. This is not money that will improve our economy. At all. It's just money that's been passed from Mr. A yes, to Mr. B. To just show. So it's not entering the economy. No. So that's why I say we have to really look within and see the role Nigerians play in this. You yes. go to a hotel, I went to a lovely hotel, but who are you fooling? Mm. So let, let's, let's take a few comments and we'll wrap up on this because we have to go on a short break. Mr. Um, just, reason, sir, just to let you know that most of the, those writing from London or anywhere abroad are uh, bewildered about what most of our colleagues in Nigeria have to go through. Let's talk about those low-paid workers. Um, just to really say, the truth is that if, not even Mariah and the ladies on this panel can really voice true opinions about their feelings. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be coded, and I respect that. I um, from how what? is that possible? Paul Michael I... says, <laughs> my concern how? is that how will the government prevent this increase from further increasing the already hiked inflation in the country, otherwise there will be no effect. Yeah. Um, Ola Didi says, in Nigeria, there is plenty happiness and less money. In UK, there's lots of depression from loneliness. Yeah, more money. Enough money to just get by. Depends on what you prefer. Um, Andrew says... That happiness, is there really is happiness? Nice. I don't know when they right. keep saying it. In okay, Nigeria, we have to wrap yes. up on this, but really, in, the, in, 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 in a nutshell, um, we, we think that um, the minimum wage is a start. You know, definitely, it's, can, it's not something that most Nigerians can live on, um, but at least it's a middle ground that hopefully in the next three years will be reviewed <coughs> upwards considerably. If lifestyle um, going, changes. If like, well, no, so we, so we say if we know one farmer. So we, the, the, we say there's a part of us who, who um, doesn't find dignity in some kind of labor. Hmm. That's all we can take on this segment. We'll come back on to our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
thanks for staying with us. So recently, the Supreme Court affirmed the financial autonomy of Nigeria's 774 local governments. Subsequently, um, the bill seeking to establish a local government independent electoral commission passed its first reading at the Senate. If the bill is passed, the Senate independent electoral commissions will be replaced by the national independent local government electoral commission. That's NILGEC. Mm -hmm. So later on on the show, hopefully we'll be trying to get our uh, Senator Sani Musa, who is expected to join us this morning, to shed some light on this. Hopefully before the end of the show, we can bring him on. But we'd like to hear Nigeria's thoughts on this. Currently we have the, um, the, the, all the various chapters in the state having their own independent electoral commissions. But now there's going to be, they're asking, they're hoping that the National Assembly, the, state, the, the Senate will pass a law to get NALGEC, that's the Nigerian Independent Local Government Election Commission, to run the elections. What are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 081-0764-1679-090-241-63440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read the tweets. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Because, I mean, many of us have <laughs> been familiar with this local government. Different states hold different elections, different times. You know, some they do Anyhow, three different. years, some they do two years, some they do four years. Depends on the, the side the governor is waking up on. Okay, no, no, you, <laughs> I'm sucking you this, you know, let's, you know. So it has never been uniform. So would you think that this new, if, if approved by the Senate, would it be better? Or do you think we should make it in, um, state by state? based on their requirements or their needs? How, how do you think? Nima. The level of psychophancy in politics in Nigeria that scares me when it comes to the level of grassroots politics. <laughs> if already, as it is now, governor can do no wrong. You now bring local government now with their autonomies and you give them power to run their own elections. Is they will jack by a ballot box and kill somebody. That's the one that scares me. I hope that. This is properly put together because there has to be a regulator. And INEC cannot now say that uh, subnationals are fully uh, established by law to run their elections. I want to see the content of that act, of the law, when it is passed. Because I, I would, it scares me to so imagine Nalkilo Pesi, national whatever for local government <laughs> elections. Now Finally yuck. running there. So I become chairman of uh, Bariga uh, Nagek. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the chairman or whoever is the substantive chairman or who is, um, what do they call it, someone that is already in office, who is content, incumbent. incumbent, has to be a friend or Before. is in trouble. Before. Or if he has his, uh, his successor picked out, he has to be a friend. Because when I'm running the election, I'm looking at him like this. If I am not somebody who's God-fearing enough, who's transparent, who has all the integrity enough, and my integrity is fulfilling enough for me. With this Nigeria of materialism we are running now, mm. it's the ISB that, mm. that goes. Yeah. So mm. the, the, what we, the autonomy <clears throat> that local governments deserve has been given to them. They, yes, as a government in a federal uh, system, has to be on their own. But then the checks have to increase. All the balances, all the regulations that we have to put has to widen. It has to be bigger than what we even have in the federal because what we are dealing with in the federal is not even as bad when it comes to local government. But I, why, why are we preempting that already? Because uh, that's the issue with our the, country. That, because that's what happened with the state police. We we say, ah, once you give them power to have state police, they'll do this. No, no. Why are we preempting the worst? Why, why don't we at least let yeah, this thing okay. function okay. as we expect it to function okay. and not assume? You know, if you're living in heaven, you cannot preempt that there'll be boreholes. If you live, <laughs> you know, it's just where you come from. So there are some of these things you call out because you're used to seeing that. And then when you ask those questions, it's to see what has been put in place to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. But uh, also for me, to, I, I don't even see the need. Because for me, this is another just waste Three of resources now, okay. for this new uh, okay. commission for the local government. For me, it's just Where's waste. INEC? Empower INEC to do it. There's already a structure on ground. There are people employed for this. Let them do that. So now we're going to have a whole new commission. We're going to employ more people. We're going to start paying salaries. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, all the other things. I just don't want this um, good news of financial autonomy for the local government to now be embroiled in, all, yes, to be embroiled in <laughs> all these extra things. And that was my fear from the beginning, that mm. the fact that they have got financial autonomy does now, does now not create, I hope it does not create monsters of that. And for me, given this body or this commission, 
I think it's a waste. Just go with INEC. Now INEC knows what to do. It's in charge of making sure that those who are supposed to be elected in that office are elected. He's taking it away from the state, and that's how it should remain. Simple. Mm -hmm. My thoughts Always. exactly. Um, why not INEC? That's the question. Uh, we already have a body that is charged with running elections. They have been doing it for years. They are equipped for it. Why are we looking at getting another body? Are you saying uh, because it's grassroots now, it's not as technical as uh, that of um, the state or the federal? No, it's the same thing. It's the same because they still have the same um, you know, system of government, whether it's the federal, it's the state, and it's the local government. And so if the federal can have INEC, the state can have INEC, why not the local government? That's also a way of saving costs if we stick to INEC instead of like you just rightly mentioned we now have to start employing new people start doing training start it will take us years again for them to even get their acts together we struggled over the years with INEC till we now started saying that okay they are improving day by day do we have that time to do all of that I, I think it's just INEC we should even not think about this we should not consider it we should scrap it we should not allow the meeting committees to be set up to be deliberating it Nigeria should say no we want INEC to handle all all the elections is just adding more to their purview. Now they know that okay, they have three arms of government that they will be catering to, and then equip them the more, and that's it. So I mean, when I was I went down and I'm looking at all the various um, the functions and powers of this proposed commission, um, obviously to conduct free and fair, transparent elections, prepare, maintain, an accurate, up to date voter register, similar to what INEC does, mm -hmm. to ensure voter education and public awareness, INEC. to set enforce electoral guidelines and regulations for local government elections, mm -hmm. to recruit and train electoral officers, same thing. To, so it's a duplication of effort. So yeah. we're saying that it should be an extension of INEC somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. So they will have um, to consist of the chairperson and six commissioners appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. The chairperson and commissioners shall serve for five years, renewable ones. So it should be an, an extension. extension. You know, so, we are collapsing uh, MDAs now. Mm -hmm. We're collapsing ministries, departments, and agencies. Why are we creating other extension. ones? We're collapsing. So it shouldn't be an extension. <laughs> INEC should just add to their purview. We now have local governments added but to us. Does INEC have the capacity to? They, will, they have it. 74 local they governments. Have, they have They've always had the, the, the chapters in Lagos. Yeah. Yes, they've, yes, in all these elections. Yeah. Equipment. But, you know, this brings us to this, we the people talk more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to support yeah. more. You see the fear? Yeah. It's because we know ourselves. Have you ever witnessed a local government election in your local? Did you ever vote in local <coughs> government elections? Yeah. You see the people that come and vote. Fear will not let you to queue. You cannot join the queen. <laughs> <laughs> and bring out your cards that you have a say in who becomes your chairman. Mm. They come from, you know, it's now um, word by word. Mm -hmm. They have come home. You know the so people. They are word. More oh, beada. You, you will see the queen. And you just JJJ be going. JJJ mm. je, je, because you don't have the energy. And we know ourselves. That's why we will sit here. And something as laudable as a federal system where state government system is clear, is a federation, is scary. For local government. So imagine. But you know, Nima, I like what you just said. Because this, that system you just described, will eventually regulate itself. Because yeah. there are some local governments that will be daring enough to yeah. say, you know what, this is who we're going to bring in. Uh, what's this guy's name? The, the singer, the, um, Banky W. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was running for office. I mean, I'm just saying that there, there are other people even within other... Leave it to us. Let me make my point. My point, my point, my point let's even leave no, Lagos. Use the, what do you mean let's by that? Let's even leave Lagos. Use the Tiosa. Let's even leave Lagos. There will be some states mm -hmm. where the people in the community say, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to vote in Opia Julu. Mm -hmm. And we are all in agreement. And we now begin to see that local government change for the better. And then it makes national news that mm. this local government in Plato State mm -hmm. is doing this. Mm -hmm. People, we begin to see, ah, hey, are you sure we want to be doing our parapet level? Mm. Well, let's get somebody who can do what Tobia Julio is doing in Plato in State. In their own place. Because the truth is that it will yeah. self-regulate. Because that is what we know. You're right. But eventually, when competition starts, because yes. the local government will start to compete with each other. Yeah, so. They will, and that, that's a healthy competition we need. For no, 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 If no, they no. do. I yes. don't think it's by that commission that they'll compete with each other. I hope it is in the financial autonomy and how they spend their money yes. yeah. that would show. That's what I'm saying. Not, I'm, yes. talking about, I'm talking about elections. I'm mm. talking about After the, the elections. Election, talking about the commission. They will do the work. The, no, I'm talking about the... Which was, which was talking about the fact that when you, you people don't want going to get involved in voting for local government chairman because yeah. they're afraid of the queue. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. so yeah. I'm just saying that that, that will self-regulate eventually when we start seeing competition across yeah, okay. the country. That's yeah, that. so I agree if that's your point no, you're sorry. making. I agree that that would eventually be the case. But So it also brought to me the, um, the fear that imagine having that and then having the local government commission created. The checks and balance would not be there. 
Do you understand? The person who has the money is the person who is, uh, who is, um, who is doing the elections. Mm -hmm. Then who is going to check and balance it? Mm -hmm. So we will now determine who sits there, who collects the money, you know, and how the money is spent. So let the, gov the election body be far, be far Away be independent from, mm -hmm. of the local government. Sure. So that in that way, we check that only the person that the people Voted want for. in there mm. is there. And that when he gets there, then we have a body that the grassroots will make sure that he's spending or they're spending or she's spending the money where it is needed and where they have asked. Let me take this call, my Demola. Thanks for calling, Demola. You're live. <laughs> Good morning. 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 Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, I think this uh, Nigerian issue about duplicating every institution we have to be stopped. I think the National Electoral Commission should be able to handle this case. And I think in their new bill, they should put it in there like they do in America and UK. As, uh, they call it midterm election. The local government should be done every two, two years before general election. And if we put it in the hands of the in the hands of the island, we should be the supervisor and the uh of the election. I think during that we give all the clue what's going to happen in general elections, whoever wants some of the local government. Because putting it in the hands of the government. I don't think that it's not. It doesn't make any sense at all. Because the manipulation is always too, too, too severe. So it's the only thing I need to contribute. Thank you very much for your comments. We have to go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. So we're still discussing um, the election commission for the local government, and we're hoping to have um, Senator um, Sani Musa at some point. We had invited him to be on this segment, but unfortunately we can't reach him, but we're hoping that very soon he can join us because we'd like to also ask a few questions on um, the need to have a new um, um, commission to handle the local government because one of the fear the Senate we've seen is that the INEC, if, the, if, if INEC to answer your question, some fear the senators have is that if INEC was empowered, a constitutional amendment is required for them to be empowered to do local government. Mm -hmm. So they are afraid that the governors can truncate the plan if amendment gets to states' houses of assembly, hence the need to create a whole new body. Mm -mm. I disagree so, with that fear because okay. <laughs> if they truncate it, those local governments will not get money. And most of them, are, it's, it's their states, except, of course, they're saying, you know, we, they've already marked about 460-something local governments that um, were handled by caretaker committees that if they don't change their leadership, they will not get their allocation. So the people who are in that, um, you know, states who find their way into the Senate or House of Assembly will understand what is at stake, that if we are pushing this down the line, you are saying that you don't want these local governments to be developed. So I don't think that's fair enough for us to quickly create another body. I think it's just for Nigerians to understand that we have INEC, and that is their chief responsibility across all um, uh, you know, um, Level. status levels of government to make sure that the leadership is being handled. Elected uh, leadership is what we have in those states and just to enforce that mm -hmm. so i don't want us to just start expending the energy we do not have in creating another body where we can be focusing on good leadership <laughs> and ensuring that INEC is equipped mm. we we use even the INEC self we are struggling to even equip them properly mm -hmm. to handle all those this is an opportunity to equip them the more so that they can do the job that's Thank just you Alaji Rafiu. thanks for calling Alaji. hello good morning sir you're live on this uh, uh, topic as you are on, yes. uh, election, election uh, committee, if we are going to go by what is normal, the 
Mr. Nigerian Electoral Committee is enough to do all the job of elections in the whole country. The problem we have is me and you, you or me, in our own place, this is how we want it to be done. And it is the problem of we lost a large area. Mm. I think he was listening to himself on TV. Since I mm. handle it. Yes, yeah. they can. Handle they all can. The elections. Mm -hmm. All elections scary. that happen in the country. Yes, is what, what is saying. scary is if a local government has to fund its own elections. Mm. Now, what I mean is that <clears throat> just as you know, the national government has to budget for the national elections, <laughs> state governments will have their budget for state for, elections, yeah. for the card, for the printing, for the blouse, for the boxes, for the, the logistics, booking everything. No, Imagine. These are our local government with their whatever percent that they are getting, 10.2%. And I'm budgeting, are, for are budgeting for elections. budgeting for their elections. Chairman becomes extremely powerful. Yeah. And we know already, you know, the independence of each... Remember the amount of money that government even spent on the, on, on, on the presidential election? Yeah, election. So That's I go a lot budget, of money. I go budget the one enough to, to buy. I go, <laughs> Before. <laughs> I go budget... <laughs> because we have people who are working in the state chapters yeah. of the commissions. Can they be... Can they be effective in conducting these elections? Remember, we're also trying to get some kind of uniformity. Yes. To ensure that all the elections are run. Maybe that, but it's difficult to you find know, uniformity because different state governments already. have different local governments at, at different points. So you so can't have a uniform election across the board. The INEC chairman with the approval of the Senate. Mm -hmm. State government does the same for mm -hmm. each state with the approval of the Houses of Assembly. And you know local government too, with the approval of those, their mm -hmm. whatever parliament, they appoint their own. Mm -hmm. And then the funding. I just pray for a transparent and free uh, election free uh, experience with local governments. It will be a prayer mm. and a wish. Okay, so, the, the, so um, I got a question here that what about the staff currently working in various state independent electoral commission? What should happen to them? Would they lose their jobs? Mm. I don't know. That's I mean, if we're creating this new one. No, yes, we're going to be creating this new one. They'll be subsuming to INEC now. So, so my, my own worry is you see, for this local government to function properly, there has to be transparency in the yeah. electoral um, process. Processes, yeah. Yeah. You must feel like, listen, the person who became local government is something that we have selected, elected, not yeah. the person, the governor. Because what we see, the trend, is, is the governor's person that becomes local government chairman. No. So the, the, the commission, whichever one eventually that the Senate agrees to go with, either Neil Jack or... I know. They should not agree now. Is that yeah. what we are doing? Either I'm way. I'm the, 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 the new Jack. Or new Jack. I'm I'm the, Jack. The, <laughs> new, the, the new fear would now this be, is. so the fear of whether it's state governor that imposes, yeah. but the new fear would now be that there is some big person or big personality at that grassroots level that determines who becomes, yes. you know, and we don't want that. We are looking for an independent electoral body. Yes. We are working hard every year, every four years, to make sure that our INEC is even more independent every year. Yes. So I don't see any reason this, to invest. Is this the in Nigerian another, that, yeah. that was criticizing the presidential election saying that INEC was... No, no, no. That, no, 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 that, that is what, that's we democracy. Yes. Should collapse now. No, exactly. That's democracy. So we call out, <laughs> every four years, you call out what their flaws yes. are. So that and you better. hope that you see the improvement in why did they take them to court? Mm -hmm. The politicians take them to court too now, and yes. they have to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. So please, I think so they can do put all the resources into INEC, empower them better, yeah. keep training and making sure that you know those who are seen to have, you know, circumventing constitution, they are brought to book. Remember the um, um, Ajamawa State um, regis um, Registra. INEC registrar. Yes. They are in court now. He was running away up and down. Mm -hmm. But they are, they are in court. So they don't catch we up. imagine we're now doing court cases for local government up and down. Hey. Let, me take, let me take Evelyn. Good morning, yeah, Evelyn. You're live. <laughs> Evelyn, you're live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? How are Very you, well. beautiful lady? Wow. Very well. I just wanted to know if you see what was talking at the beginning, because I always tune into what I always watch you people, so I was wondering why she's not talking, that's all. Go ahead. I <laughs> didn't get that part. Everybody has been talking. Go ahead, Evelyn. Hello? Can hear her, but you can't cut as well. Can't sorry, Evelyn. I'm so sorry. We didn't hear what you said. I'm sincerely apologize. Do you have any comments on social media? So, uh, what, is, what are tubes saying? Me says, there's thing on me fire says, 
INEC conducts federal and state executive and legislative elections, but we want to create a new electoral body for local government elections. In the same vein, we want to implement Aurora Sonoye's report to reduce parastatals and agencies. Is someone not seeing the obvious conflict? Mm. Uh, Amorf says local government chairman needs to be accountable. This judgment, all I see is the creation of another set of emperors mm. and demigods at the yeah. local government level. True. An average Nigerian sees power as a means to turn or to, to their turn to eat the national cake. Mm. True. Okay, I'm happy that Nigerians are expressing their views on this. So yes. many Nigerians obviously believe that um, we should merge the we should have INEC conduct the elections for the local government yes. across board. Many don't so it would be nice to have the senator here to answer those questions to yeah. see why the Senate is um, considering, um, is considering this. Um, ensuring that this new commission is established. So, yeah. so that we can also beg them to scrap it. The idea of having this sort of conversations is if we feel that this is not, this will be taking us back from where we are coming from. We, all we need to do is to go forward. All we need to do is to keep reforming and refining INEC, uh, keep making them better with all the criticisms that come. It's not because we want them to pack up. It's because we understand that they can do better. And so far, so good. For every election, they, they've, improved. They, they've improved, yes. And that is what we see. And we'll keep talking till they get to that you know, point where I don't think there's anybody who gets to a point where there's no criticism. So we'll keep talking. That's part of our responsibilities too. So we want that um, the Senate will listen to us and understand that Nigerians understand what is happening and we say no to this one. Make one no even start them. Okay. Gather the resources, gather the money, gather the consultants that you need and equip INEC to handle all the elections. It's just increasing their purview and that's all. Okay. Please. Let me take our final caller here. Down the um, Al Hassan from Lokoja, thanks for calling. Yeah, good morning, man. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You're live. Yeah, you see, the, the topic we are discussing this morning, you know, you know uh, uh, the federal government, INEC, INEC is the, they are the, they are the ones that they give the power to do elections. They are the election of the federal government and they are the election of uh, state government. And local government is also another body entirely. So they're supposed to do that election. It's not that they have to go and create another thing. Because if you look into if you look into all these things, every local every local government in the Federation of Nigeria, they have INEC office there. So if they are creating another thing new, how are they going to have all this money to, to cover all these things? And we are shocked in Nigeria who don't have money. INEC, they have the power to do that election. I think after the election, what are they, if they did the last election, what are they doing in the office? So that they cannot do another election, so they can do that. Okay. So let's not let's, let's just stop duplicating. Thank you very much, Al Hassan. I appreciate your, your thoughts. We have to wrap up on this, but I think really in a nutshell, we'll simply just uh, wait. With, unfortunately, our, the senator couldn't make it to join, join us, mm -hmm. but I'd love to ask him questions. So mm -hmm. maybe next time, the idea is to find out what they're thinking, why they want to um, establish mm -hmm. this new commission, and we'll see how that goes. But in a nutshell, the most important thing is that Nigerians will not want to ensure that the body that handles the election of the local government is transparent and is, mm, is actually works, is, is independent and works in, in the interest of Nigeria. Uh, made a banter, made a banter deal. <laughs> made a banter. <laughs> we don't want senators. We don't want. Made a banter. See, 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 don't see, 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 made a banter. They're not in Lagos. They're not in Lagos. They're not in Nigeria. <laughs> made a banter. We don't yeah. want. This is an opportunity to love find ourselves. Made a banter. Made a banter. Like banter. Let's not let it not work. Let it not work. So, people really are to, this is an opportunity to talk to us. No, you people need to go and learn Nigerian language. Thank you. Yeah. 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 We are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. Yeah. 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 This is an opportunity to talk Bands to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because when, you talk, when it comes to grassroots, we then see ourselves more. Yeah. It's easier to say what is happening in Alausa, what is happening in Ikeja, what is happening in wherever the federal capital or state capitals are. But when it now comes to your local government, it's where we talk to ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the primary school in your local government no get chair. This is the opportunity to know that you don't have a chairman. Mm, it's okay. not that election comes, they share something, you collect. Mm -hmm. And your child, I went to a public school. I'm very proud of Our Lady of Laws uh, uh, Girls School. That school formed me. But if you pass by that school today, you wonder who is the chairman in Surulere mm -hmm. right now. Sure. So you, you want to see an improvement of the infrastructure within certain things that yeah. before chairman would say, hey, they did not they give money know, from Alao yeah, have money. When you are voting, don't concern yourself so much. Not too much. Maybe yeah, you should concern yourself. But don't concern yourself too much with what is happening in other places. 
It is now where your mouth, you put your money where your mouth is exactly. Yeah. When we are voting now, it's now that we'll be talking to whoever is within the local government. Remember that in, in, in the local government elections that happened back then? And they went door to door because, you know, they wanted somebody from my community mm. to become chairman of the local government. And of course, there are about seven other communities within that local government. And they were now knocking door yeah. to door. I was like, ah, ah. We didn't see people when the community had to grade the road. So you know the way to each door now to get the votes. Mm. That's when you start to question. If this year, within four years, the chairman does not reach to help people to even grade, stop less of to talk of uh, interlocking, maybe in the next two terms, and it, it doesn't show, they, nobody should knock on your door. Yeah. The local government elections concern you much more. Yeah. The reason why I'm saying this is because we have improvements in INEC, just as BC mentioned earlier. We know they have more technology yeah, uh, improvements to ensure that there are no uh, loopholes. loopholes and there's no vote buying, all of those things, and that you cast just your one vote. Mm -hmm. No ballot snatching. You can, it is now in local government, even though you fear those boys. <laughs> even though, even though. <laughs> even though, even though. <laughs> it's now that you must protect that polling yeah, uh, yeah. box. You make sure that that box, you are looking at it till the end of counting. All those counting we did, we put our phone up, it is now. That is important you see, that you do it. You know, I, I, and you I, I, I attended right um, an event recently. I told you guys then I went to meet the mayors of Kochnopi because this is my yes. own neighborhood. Yeah. She invited um, all the stakeholders, okay. school owners, um, businesses, SMEs. Mm -hmm. She invited them to say, okay, this is what I have done. What else do you need? It was a conversation. And I was really, mm -hmm. and I, she wanted me to MC to help stir up the conversation. The conversation. So I, was asking, I was asking them questions. Okay, what do you think? Yeah. How can you, not, not in Yoruba, in English. Just them, you know, and they were asking them questions. And many of them gave ideas of, mm. what, they of what, needed, they needed. what they needed. What they only concerned their schools, how to ensure yeah, that their kids can cross, you know. And I was really excited because I didn't even realize governance was that close to the people. That's how it's supposed, to, but be. That's supposed to be. But you see, only a few know it. But what we are doing right now with this autonomy is that they've expanded it. No more school owners. All of us. Mm. Yes. can knock on their doors and go to them and say, you know what, be. please That's come and be. because they are in charge of healthcare, basic yeah. healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. They're in healthcare. charge of basic education. Yeah. Yeah. They're in charge of your roads, the your market. local roads. Yeah. Yeah. The local what else? Are they? The even markets. Your markets. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, healthcare, um, 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 environmental, environmental sanitation. Environmental sanitation. Is they are, they are yeah. those that are core. Yeah. They, are, they, are, they, are, they are core requirement responsibilities. Yeah. So we must hold them accountable. So that's why I get really excited about this thing because the truth is that Power is coming Respect. to us, yes. and we must really understand. Because sometimes the reason why we get frustrated as Nigerians mm -hmm. because governor is too far away, yeah. president is too far away. We're just shouting on social media because we don't have access to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like you know, as you described, just using her as an example of all that she's doing, even <coughs> with the constraints of not having um, the financial backing. Now she will be empowered yes. to do to take it even because she's LCDA. Yeah, well, we're not, we're not well just as an example, just yeah. using her as an yeah. example. So she will be empowered. But now also, you know that money is entering there. Your eyes is going to be on her mm -hmm. or on them or whoever it is because your money is there and you must see it. If we see you in this case, see when they are in Abuja and they buy SUV, there's nothing you can do because you are in Lagos or yes. you are in Joss. But if you see them driving SUV. After uh, they have uh, given them more money, you know, they can't hide, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. And they should yeah. be living amongst people. And no, they have to. That's, that's a chairman that is not accessible. If you are not living in that community, you please don't even bother. That. If you reach local government office and your chairman is not on seat on a Monday to a Friday, Mbasa. think I'm. Yeah. If your chairman, you get there, and one boy is saying, chairman is busy, chairman is busy for 10 hours, you're not, it's not accessible. Mm. Think, think, think I'm. I'm. Yeah. Exactly. If you're, uh, yes, so, because I once I attempted to see the chairman of my own uh, LCDA then, not the present one, the one then. I waited. You did not have access. No access. And the trucks had blocked a whole community. She now, in the, uh, who was uh, governor uh, then, governor then house, like, in the government it. house that I would go and meet. That's so. not. I should be, you should be accessible. The pictures and videos I was carrying up and down on social media, I should be able to knock on your door and say, what can you do? Mm -hmm. Even if it is not immediately within your purview, you should, as the person representing the law, call the business owner and say, no, I will not allow my roads to be so blocked. I cannot allow an emergency, uh, pre uh, allow your trucks, prevent somebody to, yeah. to get to health because of your uh, Don't emergency. Don't your happen. containers into our residential yes, areas. exactly. Our uh, local government chairman should be accessible. I have not forgiven that chairman. Thank God, say no, they did. <laughs> Since that time, yes. Because how will I go and sit at your reception and one boy... I, I like, I like, I I like what chairman. Mariam said, and I like us to end up with that because as much as too much to whom much, much, much is given, much is expected. expected. So we are expecting, yes, we are expecting, happy that you are going to get a budget. Yeah. We're also watching mm. that you don't go and start doing what you shouldn't be doing with that money. 
Yeah. Your whole eyes are now on you because I can't I can't hold Tawolu because it's very far. Yes. For you, I can hold you. Yes, so. I can, can hold your shokoto. I can hold your shokoto very well. <laughs> well girl, where did you get the money to buy this SUV? Yeah. So we we as excited as we are, they also must know that Nigerians are going to hold them accountable. So all of us now, our our homework is to go and know. We should go to uh, name names so of words, seven and seventy four local government. Mm -hmm. They are world champions. Because the words make up the parliament within the local government. Yes. Exactly. What they was be what see. Know them in your local they're government. Really ah, know, <laughs> know them. the words. Those, very people, those are the people that usually graduate mm -hmm. to become chairman. Know them. Know their house address now. Whether they are driving a Camry or they are driving and you, mark it down. And, mark it and attend their meetings. Yes, they, they, yeah. they are meet their public meetings where they talk about their yeah. budgets, their yes. plans. I mean, I've only really attended one. I think them. they have to be announced ah. when they do the meetings. No, they do. They, they do. do. We don't. Just we're not aware. We don't send them now. It's local government. No, they don't place it. Don't know. They should. They should make it. Yes, they should allow it so that we become as stakeholders that we are. Yeah. So what we Nigerians are waiting for is for this law to be passed. Let mm. us let, let 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 them the, the commission to. I don't know if they're no, going eh, 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 to. Don't want to spoil it. We okay. don't want commission. Either I need a banda. I need to. <laughs> let me make the banda. Make a banda. You not sweet for your mouth. The banda. The banda. The banda. Or we have the new gek. That's the Nigerian. You know you don't call that one. Nigeria, Nigeria <laughs> Independent Local Government Electoral Commission. New Gek. New Jack. New Jack. New Jack reaction. <laughs> it's Monday. It's too early it's for this thing. <laughs> that is yeah, all we can, we can take. <laughs> okay. We are hoping that we can bring in somebody sometime this week to explain. To explain. Yeah. Um, this better so Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. But last, last, midday. Banza. 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 Banza.